Chuck, we're back. Okay. For another explainer. All right. Uh, this one, I, I, did we talk about this before? I have a bad memory for what I've been talking about. But I'm going to do it anyway, and if it's not, we'll just do it again. Here it is. You ready? Okay. What okay. Is it? So there's an interesting difference between being an astrophysicist and being a photographer. Okay? Okay. Here's the difference. A college education? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the difference. We know that when you have an object and you heat it and its temperature rises, it it actually radiates energy. Okay? Radi if it's very cold, it'll radiate radio waves and microwaves. In fact, the whole universe is three degrees absolute zero, uh, three degrees above absolute zero. Very cold. At that temperature, microwaves get emitted. So the universe is a source of microwaves upon us because of that leftover temperature from the Big Bang. Heat anything more, so I don't care what it is, heat it some more, and then the energy it'll start giving us will start shifting in the spectrum, and then it'll start giving us infrared energy. Okay? You can't see it. It's not glowing visibly yet. But if we have sensors that are not our eyes to detect infrared, do you know what it's called? Uh, no. Touch. Okay. <laughs> <You> touch <it. laughs> okay. Heat, right? Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. Right. If it's go. if it's warm, you can you can detect low level infrared all the way up to high level infrared just by getting near it, and you can feel the energy, or you can touch it, and you can and you can feel the temperature. Okay. Okay. So Chuck, it gets a little warmer than infrared. Now it begins to glow red and so now it's giving you energy it's giving you photons in the visible part of the spectrum say hey that that's hot that's glowing red hot right okay but i know that you can keep making the temperature higher it'll still glow but now it's going to glow white hot and then glow blue hot and the blue hot is the hottest of the glowing temperatures but we don't experience that in everyday life so Nobody says blue hot anything. Anything. They don't say that. Anything. Plus, ice and icebergs have this blue tone to them. So psychologically, it all feels different. But here's what's interesting. Okay? When we transitioned from incandescent bulbs, the old-fashioned old Edison light bulb, to LEDs, okay? Ask yourself, why would a light bulb giving you visible light ever get hot? Because it's glowing white hot, but it's also still giving off infrared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, but wait a minute. I have a light bulb so that I can see. So the 100-watt light bulb, or whatever the wattage you bought, it turns out most of that energy is coming out in the infrared. Yes. It's which a is, waste. Which is why they would always say, on the package it would say, um, wait, until, wait for whatever, you know, however long before changing the light bulb. Because so many people would be like, like the light bulb would blow out. They would go get another light bulb, come back, well, go to change it and burn their hands. That's how hot the bulb was. It's a complete waste of everybody's energy. The fact that we had light bulbs that was giving us infrared. Wow. So the brilliant thing about LEDs, and let me remind you, LEDs are of this next generation interior lighting. We couldn't do it until we had all three colors of LEDs. We had red, red LEDs. Right. We had green LEDs. Mm -hmm. We didn't have blue. Blue. And that would, once we got blue, we'd have RGB. You can combine them, and RGB combined in light. Don't, it's not, it doesn't work this way in paint. Don't right. tell your artist friends this. You combine RGB with light, and you get white light. The thing about LEDs is they're not glowing. They're not glowing from heat. It's actual white light. It's actual light coming out at 
those frequencies, at the red frequency, at the green frequency, at the blue frequency. Your eye merges them and you see it as white light. There is no energy coming out in the infrared or anywhere else. That's right. So that's why you can have a three watt <laughs> yes. LED bulb that just kicks ass against a 60 watt or however many, five watts, whatever, right. against a 60 watt of Edison bulb, regular uh, old fashioned bulb, because most of that Edison energy is coming out in infrared and none of that energy is coming out in infrared for the LED. It's all in the visible part of the spectrum. I don't know why we didn't do this one so much earlier because two things, and it's so exciting that you just actually did everything you just did and related it to light bulbs. One, people went crazy when uh, we said we were gonna transition to all LED light bulbs, and they did it because uh, President Blackula said that we <laughs> should actually, that we should actually move to all LED light bulbs. And people were like, ah, now the government's trying to tell you what kind of light bulb you can have. No, I swear to God, it's my God-given right to have me a regular incandescent light bulb. That's America. And so people lost their minds. This <laughs> Chuck's imitation of America. <laughs> <laughs> they lost their minds. They lost and, their minds. And okay. what you are saying is, one, um, it's more uh, it's it's more efficient because it is exactly what it is, which is so it's energy light, efficient. It's by energy factor of ten. By effect, okay. Right? And then the other thing you said was that is why you see on the box it's whatever many watts instead of like your two hundred watt bulb or whatever. It's like you know it says if they do lumens now. Yeah, you can't use watts because you know what watts are. Watts is not the measure of the brightness of anything. Right. Watts is the measure of how much energy, the rate at which it's consuming energy. Exactly. And, and since we all had the same light bulbs, you could compare watts and say that one is, you know, twice whatever. You, you, had, you had some sense of that. Right. But really with light bulbs, it should have always been measured in lumens. In fact, in Europe, I think they always measured it in lumens. Yeah. So you're really, you're after lumens here. You're not after wattage. Okay. So this is a maturity of the American population yeah it's this is this is the best reason for you people to go out and get led lights i mean for me I, you know i got into this because it's great for the environment you know if we all did it we would really lessen our carbon footprint for the entire nation but the fact is here's why you should do it you save money you just you just proved how much more efficient it is you save, save your money. own damn money you your correct damn even money. if you don't care about the environment care about your own damn wallet there you right. go so, and that's why you can go up to any LED bulb and it's not hot. It'll right. never be hot. It's not about being hot. Man, Man that's, that's not great. The, and here are these people, oh, Earth is flat and I don't like science and other. The person who discovered the blue LED got a Nobel Prize for that because the moment that got discovered, it blew open the entire lighting industry because now you can make white light. In fact, you can make any color light. That's why you can get LED controllers where the, the light itself has an RGB uh, diodes in them. Um, and you can just control the ratios of those and get any color you want. Mm -hmm. And so you can have, it, it, the Empire State Building is lit by these things. Okay? And it's very, int the intensity of the color is very real and it's very in the, in the moment. So, so just thought I'd tell you that. That's super cool. Well, listen. White light was what we were striving for, but always remember, only black light can make your dorm room look cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, so black light, just to be clear, is an ultraviolet light, but the part of it you see is the violet that's just kicking into the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet part of the spectrum. You can see that, but that's not why you have it in your dorm room. You have it because the ultraviolet light interacts with the pigment in the pictures on your wall, the posters, and it forces the pigment to glow, okay? And it, 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 it's, it's, it's called phosphorescence, right? And so that high energy light that you can't see, the pigment can't see, it absorbs it, and then gives it back to you in visible light and it looks like the paintings are glowing. So in a sense, it is black light. It is light that you can't see. Nice. Yeah. All right.
Well, this was great. You got it, Chuck. <laughs> so next time you walk by a, 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 an LED, just pause and say, thank you, science. <laughs> there you go. Just say that anyway. <laughs> say that anyway. <laughs> just say that anyway. <laughs> Wake up in the morning, take a deep breath. Thank you, thank science. You science. <laughs> I should tweet that. I'm going to do that. Exactly. Let me see if I can start a movement. So, Chuck, we got to call this one quits. I, I hope you enjoyed this one. Always, always. Very good, very good. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson here, as always. Keep looking up.